Hello, Dr. Daly here. Um, today we're going to talk about a very, very important and overlooked topic, which is food sensitivities. I cannot tell you how important understanding this is for your recovery. What I really want you to get out of this particular video and this topic is the fact that there are food allergies and there are food intolerances and sensitivities. So food allergies are ones that are a more severe response, like one that would cause a reaction that might cause you to not be able to breathe. The others are much more subtle and I hope that that comes out because truly I can almost guarantee you that you have multiple food sensitivities. You know, it, it's kind of funny, but uh, I could tell a patient when they come in, write down your 10 favorite foods. And for most people, if they took those 10 favorite foods and stopped eating them, they would be much healthier and many of their symptoms would go away. But with that in, the, with that in mind, remember that one man's food is another man's poison. Well, that's really a familiar and centuries old saying, which simply states that different people can have different reactions to the very same food. For example, few of us would think twice about eating peanuts while we're rooting for our favorite baseball team. But there are individuals with a, a, an allergy to peanuts where a mere whiff of the peanut powder could be life-threatening. Fortunately, few of us will ever have to worry about those kind of extreme reactions to foods, but it may come as a surprise that probably 50% of us will experience one or more episodes of some kind of food sensitivity during our lifetime. These may cause symptoms with varying degrees of physical discomfort, which are often never related back to the food that is in fact their source. There is increasing evidence that food sensitivities are much more common and have a wider and more varied impact on our health than previously realized. Although often equated with food allergies, food sensitivities also include food intolerances, which unlike allergies are toxic reactions to foods that are often more difficult to diagnose. Many of the symptoms of food sensitivities, including vomiting, diarrhea, blood in the stool, eczema, hives, skin rash, wheezing, and runny nose are associated with an allergic reaction to specific foods. However, food sensitivities may also cause fatigue, gas, bloating, mood swings, nervousness, migraine, headaches, and eating disorders. So these symptoms, which are more commonly related to, related to food intolerances, are less often associated with the consumption of food. Clinical research is accumulating evidence that the sensitivity to food can also increase the severity of symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, and other diseases that are underlying that normally are not considered related to food. Let me help you understand a little bit more about the cause of food sensitivities, how they affect your health, and how we can help you select foods that help you maintain optimal physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Because food sensitivities include many different types of sens sensitivities to food which arise for a wide variety of reasons, making it really complex and oftentimes confusing and not easily defined as an area of study. Diagnosis can be difficult because symptoms may be delayed, get this, for up to 24 hours and even 48 hours after the food has been consumed. In general, food sensitivities are the result of a toxic response to foods and are divided into two categories, which I touched on in the beginning, allergic responses and food intolerances. Food allergies are defined as toxic clinical reactions to food or food additives that involve a severe immune system response, and I did say severe. Symptoms can vary depending upon a number of variables, including age, type of allergen, and of course the amount of food that's consumed. It may be difficult to associate the symptoms of an allergic reaction to a particular food because the response time can be highly variable. For example, an allergic response to eating fish usually occurs within minutes after consuming the fish in the form of a rash, hives, asthma, or a combination of symptoms. 
However, the symptoms of an allergic reaction to cow's milk can be delayed for 24 to 48 hours after consuming the milk. Symptoms may be low grade and they might last for several days. If this, this doesn't make diagnosis difficult enough, reactions to foods made from cow's milk may also vary depending how the product or the uh, proportion of milk which you're allergic. See, delayed allergic reactions to foods are difficult to identify without eliminating the food from your diet for at least several weeks and then slowly reintroducing it while taking note of any physical, emotional, or mental changes as it's being reintroduced. So a food diary for many people is a godsend. Now imagine having multiple food sensitivities. These would be foods that you regularly eat that produce a variety of overlapping symptoms. The problem is you've been eating most of them all your life. So how can you tell what foods are causing your symptoms? And we will get to that, by the way. But things like gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, skin outbreaks, generalized fatigues, uh, joint and muscle pain, sleeplessness or brain fog, all of those are common symptoms. Now, that would be confusing, wouldn't it, if all of those are overlapping? Well, most of my fibromyalgia patients are confused as to the cause of their symptoms. There are over 140 different foods that have been identified as causes of allergic reactions. According to a recent report by the United States Center for Disease Control, 90% of food allergies are associated with just eight types of food. So that kind of makes that 140 number much more uh, tolerable. So the top foods are cow's milk, eggs, peanuts, soy, wheat, fish, like shellfish, crustaceans, lobster, crab, tree nuts like almonds, cashews, walnuts, pecans, uh, pistachios, Brazil nuts, hazelnuts, even chestnuts. So cow's milk is one of the first foods to consider eliminating from your diet when attempting to determine the foods to which you may be allergic. It contains over 25 different molecules which have been identified by scientists as having the potential to elicit an allergic food response. One of the most common allergens in cow's milk is a protein called casein. You've probably heard of it, which is used in many products and even found in soy-based foods to boost the protein content. Now, if you suspect an allergy to cow's milk, you should also avoid other products made from, from milk like cream or creamy sauces, ice cream, milk chocolate. Um, how a food has been prepared, processed, and handled and stored can also affect uh, whether or not you're going to have a severe allergic reaction or how intense it might be. For example, some molecules responsible for allergic reactions can be destroyed by heat. So individuals with allergies to cow's milk have reported that drinking heated milk doesn't cause the symptoms associated with their particular milk allergy, suggesting that well, when the molecule's been heated or, or he, the heating process actually destroys the molecule, having been destroyed in the heating process, the individual doesn't react. However, the molecules in peanuts that can be highly toxic in people with uh, peanut allergies are known to be very stable and unaffected even by long periods of heat. So among foods which are least often associated with any type of food allergy, and this is important as we move into the program, um, are apples, lamb, pears, uh, winter squash, sweet potatoes, cherries, carrots, and rice. Winter squash, carrots, and sweet potatoes are not only uncommon as allergens, but also provide exceptionally rich sources of health-promoting phytonutrients. Uh, electing to eat organically grown foods also helps to minimize the intake of pesticides and other allergy-producing toxins. Food allergies involve unique interactions between an individual and a particular food. You gotta, you, you must listen to your body. There are no hard and fast rules as to what foods cause an allergic reaction. You, for instance, may be able to tolerate 
the more commonly allergenic foods while unable to tolerate a food which is rarely associated with a food allergy. Your personal health status and history of eating uh, also must be considered when evaluating potential food allergens. The best approach, and we'll talk more about this for managing food allergies, is to follow the elimination diet to help determine the foods that may be problematic and then avoid eating those foods. Again, I want you to be sufficiently convinced that the gut is the cornerstone of health and that foods have a huge impact on the way you feel, both physically and emotionally. You are going to have to recognize this because the road to healing is going to have to go through some dietary modifications. Thanks so much for your time and attention. God bless you. Have a great day.